Want a preview of the battle between traditional cars and self-driving ones? Don't look to Tesla, Apple, or Google. Look back 100 years when automobiles took on horses and the cars played dirty to win. Ransom Olds, who founded the Olds Motor Works, Oldsmobile, was particularly aggressive in his attacks on the horse. This was like a psychological thing. I don't know where it would fall in a diagnostic sense, but he really hated horses. That's G. Wayne Miller. He wrote Car Crazy, a book that's about the really early days of cars. And early car marketers had the horse on their mind. Those cars were unreliable and traveled on really bad roads. So car makers had a lot of work to do and a lot of gimmicks that they used. People were scared of cars. One undertaker used to leave his card on automobile dashboards. So automakers had to be pretty aggressive selling their invention. They raced cars around the country and manufacturers insulted their competitors in ads. But some of their marketing firepower was reserved for the horse. Of course, they invented the term horsepower, defining a car's power by how many horses it could replace. But they also rigorously tested horse braking power against their own cars, like a 15 horsepower de Dion against a team of horses. Yeah, the machine stopped more quickly. And they taunted mercilessly. One old ad said, nature made a mistake in giving the horse brain. The company claimed cars were cheaper and easier than horses, even though most cars were really pricey and often required a home mechanic. Henry Ford hated horses too. The horse is doomed, Ford told a reporter. These horses will be driven from the land. Their troubles will soon be over. Car makers took on horses in public shame races, and in 1895, a new magazine launched with a name that was not subtle. It was the horseless age. On the road, cars often collided into horses, and conflicts between car owners and farmers were common. But hating on horses wasn't just personal. It was logical. By the early 1900s, the laboring horse wasn't noble. It was a public health hazard. Thousands of horses died each year from disease, overwork, and old age, and those that lived produced millions of pounds of manure. Those were significant and real public health hazards. And urbanites were aware of it too. As cities like New York grew really quickly, streets became jammed with horses and tons of horse waste. And there was another despicable downside. Not every horse owner was a kind person, and so horses were frequently whipped and beaten. And when they died, you know, these despicable owners often would leave one ton or ton and a half horse in the streets, just leave it there. And that was a clear health hazard. Cars helped change that. Even Horseless Age spoke up for the horse, saying in its first issue that cars would spare the obedient beast. So yes, cars and horses did have a knockdown, drag out fight, but there were two winners. And that's how it might be when self-driving cars come around, a fight to convince consumers, followed by a likely decrease in fatalities and pollution. It might not always be easy. Motor World's 1905 headlines claimed that since time of chariots, people have opposed all new vehicles, and that might still be true. But as Horseless Age put it more sweetly in their very first issue, streets will be cleaner, jams and blockades less likely to occur, and accidents less frequent. Thanks to G. Wayne Miller for talking to me. This video is basically a chapter of his book and there are a lot of good stories in there. I wanted to share one more insult, however, and it comes from the first issue of The Horseless Age. This is what they said in response to the argument that the automobile scares horses. Suppose it does. So do locomotives, bicycles, streetcars, 4th of July celebrations, and a dozen other things. Horses must get used to it. Boom.